After a long wait, parents could start vaccinating younger children as soon as next week. FDA advisors voting in favor of smaller Pfizer doses for kids ages 5 to 11. It could be a key step in slowing down the pandemic as winter gets closer. But with 28 million kids soon to be eligible, the question really is, how many parents will get on board with this? Let's discuss now with Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Doctor, thank you very much. I really appreciate you joining us this evening. Vaccinations for children five to 11 years old could be approved in just a matter of days. Parents have a lot of questions about that. Here's a big one, the dosage, okay? These five to 11 year olds will get a smaller dose than kids who are 12 and older, even though they are close in age and could have uh, uh, you know, much bigger body sizes. What do you say to parents? Because you know they're concerned about, about this. No, actually I don't, Don, because you're gonna have to make a cutoff some point. And the empiric cutoff was made at that age from five to 11. As you know, from 12 and older, the dose was the standard dose. They cut the dose down now to about a third of what it is. It was 30 uh, micrograms, it's now 10 micrograms. So I think that's a reasonable thing to do if you were gonna have to start measuring it like by body weight and things like that, it would really become too confusing. I don't really have any concern as a physician and as an immunologist knowing the kinds of things when you stimulate the immune system. I, I think we'll be okay. I think that was a prudent choice. Yeah, that was my next question. What about body mass or size or height and all of that? And you don't find that necessary? No, I don't think so, Don. I really don't. I think it would become too confusing if that were the case. I think this is a good way to have that cut off. Okay. So listen, the, a, a recent Kaiser Family Foundation poll shows this, that only around a third of parents, 5 to 11, of 5 to 11-year-olds, will vaccinate their children as soon as it becomes available. With COVID trending down right now and cases often less severe in children, lots of parents are asking if their kids really need it. What do you say to them? You know, I think, I think the answer to that, as I, I feel fairly certain the answer to that is it would be a good idea to vaccinate the children. You know, when you ask people about what their likelihood of, of having vaccinations be there for themselves when they're adults or for their children, you know, we start off at about 35, 37%. And then when people start seeing that the vaccinations are being distributed and they're being administered and things are going well, people gain more confidence. So I think that number of the people that would be willing, if not enthusiastic, about getting their children vaccinated is going to increase. You know, Don, I do feel it's important to vaccinate children. No doubt, from a statistical standpoint, when children get infected, there's very much more likely that they would not have a severe outcome compared to an elderly person like myself or someone who has an underlying condition. But that doesn't mean that the kids are exempt from some serious illness because all you need to do is go to the pediatric hospitals around the country and you see particularly with the Delta variant, which has a much greater chance of transmitting, that more kids are getting infected. And as more kids get infected, some of them, maybe a small proportion, are gonna have a serious outcome. Also, you wanna make sure that we don't have a situation where the children inadvertently and innocently, when they get infected, many of them without any symptoms, are spreading it within the family unit, which is something that recent studies indicate that that might be the case. So there's a really good reason to have the children vaccinated, and that's the reason why we hope that we'll be able to answer the reasonable questions that parents would have, no doubt about that. They have good questions and hopefully in the outreach, we'll be able to adequately answer the questions of the, of the parents. One of those reasonable questions might be, uh, you know, my, my, my kid already had COVID. They still need to get the vaccine. I mean, I know you recommend it for adults. Is that the same as adults? If the kids have had it, do they need to get the vaccine? You know, I, I think that would be the case, uh, Don, for the following reason. One of the things that's so clear that if you are infected and you recover and then you get vaccinated, the level of your immunity against reinfection is really profound. It goes way, way up, making you really very, very well protected against a return infection, even with a different variant. Because we know when you have a high level of these neutralizing antibodies, it spills over and covers essentially many of the variants that we know are circulating. Right now, Delta is obviously the critical one. It occupies about 99% of the isolates in this country. Mm. 
So uh, other questions. Parents are worried about Miss C and long COVID in children. How much do we still have to learn more than a year and a half into this, doctor? Well, we know that it occurs and it's serious. You know, there have been something like 5,000 kids that we now have documented have gotten Miss C. It can be a, a serious disease. Several children have died from that. Long COVID is an interesting thing, Don. And, and the reason is that one of the things that we learn about in real time as the months go by and maybe even the years go by is that we don't know the full impact of what happens following infection. We're learning a lot about that. We know that kids can get long COVID. And for the audience not knowing what that is, it's a persistence of symptomatology, sometimes not really readily explained by any pathophysiological process, but we've seen it could be very debilitating, certainly in adults. Fortunately, children statistically have a less of a chance of long COVID. I think in the adults, it's anywhere from 10 to 35% or more. With children, it's somewhere between four and 6%. Mm. But there still is the risk. And you don't want to take the chance of a child having some long-term consequences of being feeling washed out, inability to concentrate in the things that are associated with long COVID. A lot of reasons, Don, to get the children vaccinated. You know, I did a story uh, last night, um, I reported on a story last night about a, a, a high school that is, you know, testing whether some of the kids can, the kids and, and the staff who are vaccinated, if they can go maskless. So many parents want to know if their kids will be able to go maskless once they are vaccinated. You, you know, the answer is not right now. And when you say maskless, I, I think, Don, we have to qualify what you mean. If you're talking about in an indoor space in which you're not sure everyone is vaccinated or what their status is, the CDC recommendation still says that in the school setting and in indoor congregate places, to wear a mask even when you're vaccinated. And the reason is, Don, that the dynamics of infection right now, we still are averaging about 70,000 infections a day. That's a viral dynamic that's too high to say, okay, we're good to go. We don't need to do any more mitigation. There absolutely will be a time, and I hope that's soon, when we could put the masks behind us. But I don't believe now, particularly when you're in an indoor setting, that we're ready for that right now. I want to talk to you about, uh, I'm sure you know that your, your colleague, Dr. Uh, Deborah Burks, gave a damning appraisal of the Trump administration's response in House testimony saying that 130,000 lives could have been saved by just implementing measures like masks and increased testing, reducing outdoor dining and family gatherings and so on. She also says that the 2020 election distracted them from the virus response. You were there. Do you agree with her characterization? Well, I, I think we could have done much better, and, and I made no secret about that. I mean, that got me into some trouble with the Trump people when I was being open and honest about the fact that I felt that many of the things that were said about, don't worry, this is going to go away, or not paying as much attention to it, I, I don't think you could put a number on how many lives would have been saved if you did it differently. It, it's much easier the other way to say, if you did this different thing, if you vaccinated people, you would, in fact, save a lot of lives. But you know, Dr. Burks tried her best when she was there. I was with her. But a lot of times, some of the things that we recommended were just not put into place. Mm -hmm. So she does have a point in what she said. Dr. Fauci, thank you. Good to be with you, Don. Thank you for having me.